Introducing NearJam, Nearpod plus Jamboard. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to put a Jamboard into a Nearpod so that you can make an interactive activity. So think about a Nearpod draw it slide, but where students can actually access each other's work and make comments in real time. Additionally, I'm going to show you how to make the Jamboard, insert the Jamboard, and some tips on how to use the Jamboard within the Nearpod with in your class. So how to set it up ahead of time, make some partner groups, and how to use the collaborative structures. So first you want to actually create a Jamboard. So I'm going to go back over to my Jamboard slides here. So at the top it shows the slides, but when you first make your Jamboard you're only going to have one slide. So if I go back to the initial slide, it's right here, which is the same as all the others because I have already duplicated them. This is a picture, right? So I can move it around. So I inserted the picture by going here to add image and then you can drag any file from your computer. I made this in pages and I created an activity. So you'll see here that I have um, a activity for partner A and activity for partner B. They will each use the tool of their choice, the text tool or the writing tool to solve these problems. And then in the collaborative structure at the top, virtual paired heads together, I ask them after they work on their problem themselves to then check the work of their partner on the same slide. They're not leaving the slide, they're just gonna look over the work and they're gonna leave a good sticky note, right? So that's not just leaving a positive comment saying good work, it's a sticky note that is informative and appropriate to the work that's done. And so I'm gonna review that as well with my students on how to write a good sticky note. Then based on the note or based off of viewing the other student's work, if any errors are noticed in your, the student's own work, they would then go back and check it. I also advise my students if they're done, they can then go and leave good sticky notes on fellow classmates Jamboards just by going up to the top and clicking through. So once you create the Jamboard yourself, um, and you duplicate each slide, you can go to this three dot option up here, you select it and you'll have the duplicate here. When you click on it, the slide just opens up. It's the same exact slide. If you hit the plus button, you're gonna get an empty slide, which is not what we want, right? So this allows them to duplicate right there. Then after it's all set up, you can click the share button in the top right. Then you need to change the settings by making it with anyone with a link and editor. So you can see, um, you would click on the left side to change it to anyone with a, a link. And then on the right side, you would change that to editor because we want the students to be able to edit. Then select or click on the copy link. That will copy the entire long link there. And then select done. Now you go back into Nearpod from Jamboard. You can then go into your lesson Create a new slide, select a content slide, choose a web content. The box below will pop up and you will insert that URL for your Jamboard into that box. You can do that by right clicking and pasting. You can hit Control and V or Command and V if you're on an Apple and then click Save. You are then ready for NearJam. So once you're in the activity and you can test it out on your own, the, you'll just slide through to the Jamboard. And when you do, there's a chance that the Jamboard might just pop up on its own, depending on your settings. You might have that click here to open web page. And I've actually had it where it generates in my Nearpod slide, and then as soon as I click on it to manipulate it, it then pops up into another uh, window. So any of those options could potentially happen. Now I'm not so sure how exactly this works on phones or settings like if students have uh, the Jamboards blocked because of age or any other restrictions uh, within your G Suite for your school. So that's something you do have to look into and maybe test if you can before uh, relying on this. So this is where I go in to describe how you would duplicate the slides, which we already kind of went into. So now initially in my previous presentation, um, in the self-paced, I said that you can have students duplicate on their own. 
that can get a little bit chaotic. So duplicating the sessions or the slides on your own before you do the session will keep things organized and streamlined. And this is an alternative where you can have that done ahead of time, then assign students to a slide number and they are to work in that slide number, find the slide and work in there with their partner. So that can keep it a little bit more organized. Additionally, if a student doesn't put their name on their work, you can just check out which student belonged to that slide and then you know whose work is in that slide. If you wanted to, you can also put the students' names on the slide if you uh, wanted to prep in that way as well. Now, the next thing to note is where all the tools are in Jamboard. So they're on the left side there. I do suggest an activity with students where they test out all of those editing tools prior to getting into any real schoolwork. So maybe creating an activity like an about you activity or something just sort of fun where students can write, type, attach sticky notes or pictures or make drawings uh, so that they know how to use all of those tools. You need to go over some other expectations like don't ever clear the frame, don't delete other people's slides, and set really clear expectations on how they should be communicating and respectful. I would also advise the students that you can monitor every single slide in real time. So you'll be in the Jamboard as well. And when you're in the Jamboard, you can see at the top the people who are in the slide. So you should be able to see that there's two people in each slide when you're at the part of the work where the student should be working. So if you see three or four people in a slide, uh, maybe you have to go to that slide and, and see what's going on and maybe uh, enter a note saying, you know, who's in the slide and which slide should you be in and help them uh, kind of facilitate that. You can also check in on notes and just let them know that you're there monitoring all of the interactions, all of the drawings and things like that so that they should be advised not to do anything inappropriate. Here's a list of all the, the tools that are um, in the Jamboard. You can pause here and take a look at that, but it's pretty um, simple and straightforward. So I also always present the activity to my students prior to actually letting them enter the activity. So this allows me to have a few more people paying attention because once you enter in a draw it or a jam board, the students want to play around. They want to get working. So here I say, okay, this is the slide that you're going to enter into. I'm going to have you solve uh, for the area of a triangle. There's going to be a spot for partner A and a spot for partner B. This is what I want you to do. Partner A solves example one, partner B solves example two. Then you need to comment on each other's work. You may interact with each other as you go. So if you have a question, you know, type it out where your partner can see it and your partner can respond directly underneath. So present that, present the structures, have the structures written and the instructions written so that if the students are not paying attention because they're so excited to go into the near jam, then um, they are written there so they can look at them on their own. So then now, since I'm demonstrating that I have set up all the slides, I've set up eight slides for my entire class. That means two people um, per slide, so 16 students. And I'm saying, okay, slide number one is Jenna and Brian. Slide number two is Camille and Cecilia. That means that when we go into the near jam, the students are to go into it and then scroll until they find their slide, click on it, and then enter the, the slide. So they can put this back up and then they should see at the top right here, two of nine. They know they're in two. They can also just scroll by clicking. That will keep it a little bit more streamlined, I think, than having students duplicate slides and then have two people in a slide or people saying I duplicated but now I can't find my slide. This will make things a lot more organized. Now, I also present to my students, right, and I think we're going to have to do a lot of this because we're going to be communicating online instead of maybe face-to-face -face like we're used to. How do you communicate? So I'm going to be presenting the idea of good sticky notes, and I'm going to say good sticky notes are, and I'm going to model some of them. They're directed to someone and signed. They're helpful and informative. They're focused on math and observations. I'm going to teach my students and give feedback on the types of notes that they give. I'm going to model it. As I enter the near jam, I'm going to leave my own good sticky notes so that students can see how I communicate with them and what I expect 
from them in return with their classmates. So this is a good opportunity to actually take things a little bit beyond maybe what you normally teach and build these advanced skills in our students to be communicating well and enhance their writing abilities. <clears throat> so now you are about to enter the near jam. So I hope you're as excited as me about this because I love Nearpod's draw it slide, but without having the students be able to communicate with each other and share ideas and teach each other, which that's my favorite part about math class is that I empower my students to teach each other and learn from each other. This provides that opportunity in this virtual world. It's not ideal because it's not face-to-face. -face. They're not speaking, but it is uh, potentially even more beneficial because they will be practicing their writing skills. So here now we're in the near jam, but the jam board did not open up. But if I click on my slide, it does open up into the near jam. And since I have two open now, oh, I was going to say, I thought, yep, you can see I'm in slide number six. So this is what I was talking about. You will be able to see where your students are within the slide. So you can monitor it that way. Um, you should have your students come in once they go to their slide. So let's say I'm slide number two. I'm gonna put my name in here. And then I'm going to get to work. So I prefer typing out my math work. I am going to write my formula first and then I'm gonna substitute in the work here. So 11 times 4 I have um, and then I can continue down. You're gonna see some students might prefer to actually draw it out which is fine so they can use the drawing tool and then here's your sticky note so I'm gonna say Jess you forgot to finish the problem. Mia. Right and so then once you're here, it's weird, your note's gone, you hit save, you're still here. So just click the Jamboard and you're out of there and then I can put this note here and then the other person would put their note there. They can change the colors, all that kind of fancy stuff and then they can scroll through to see other students work. Um, and then as you scroll through as the teacher, you can see what's happening within the Jamboards in real time. Obviously you can't be in all the slides at once, but you can sort of monitor and you can kind of see um, as things are happening in real time. So this is just one structure at the top, the virtual paired heads together. I definitely think this can work with um, think, pair, share. Um, I've done coaching sort of like round tables where uh, you can say partner A gives the first step, partner B gives the second step, and then continue in that pattern until it's done. So if I was me, I would say, Jess, the first step is to write whoops, the formula. Okay, so now once I post that, I would put that over here. And then I could teach my students that the next person would write the sticky note and they would say, Mia, the second step is dot, dot, dot. And then they would enter that right below. So then you can see the chain of communication. And this might be something that's good that you teach your students that whether they're using sticky notes or the texting tool, they can write, write, um, on there and then maybe teach them to stack them or put them in a pattern going across depending on how you choose to lay out your Jamboard. I think the opportunities are endless. I think that you can take some of the wonderful cooperative structures and collaborative structures that you use in the classroom and modify them for this kind of environment. I have studied two degrees online and I personally think I learned far more from those degrees including written communication and um, that came a lot from seeing how my other classmates and colleagues wrote and I thought it was such a great benefit because you know if you're doing student pace especially students can take their time and read what other students are writing and that is where I learned the most now if you think about a classroom time we are limited to the time of the class with the virtual world some of these things that we set up the students have unlimited time I know that I may be being a little naive and hopeful that students will take that time to do those things. But when we create them in this positive way, and that's part of their requirement, they may have an opportunity 
to go and read from other people. So for example, if they were struggling with a certain task, they can slide through as many slides as they want until they find the information they're looking for. So essentially finding a student that's explained it in the way or shown it in the way that they need in order to learn. So I think that is the benefit of um, doing written communication as well. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you find it useful. I hope that you can build off of this. So come up with new ideas on how to integrate it, how to use it for group work, um, and how to build wonderful learning environments for our students online. If you come up with some awesome solutions, please share them. Find us on social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter. Just search up Teaching More Than Math and and always uh, check out our blog at teachingmorethanmath.com slash blog. Um, you can even click, there's a Nearpod category, and you can find all the things that we write about Nearpod, which is my favorite teaching tool, even in the classroom. So and if you're in the classroom, I think this is even perfect, especially since we have social distancing. Our students are not going to be able to be next to each other and talking in conversation tone for some time. So these are skills that you and tools that you can use even in the classroom if you're doing like a hybrid model or full in class. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this and take care. I wish you all a happy, wonderful school year. Bye.